with the return of President-elect Donald Trump to the White House, we're probably going to see some major changes when it comes to international trade, sanctions, economic policies. But how will this all play out, and how will it be different from the first Trump administration? Tro joining us to discuss is Scott Lindsacombe, <coughs> Vice President of General Economics and Trade at the Cato Institute. Now let's just jump right into it in this new post that came out from uh, for President-elect Donald Trump, he said on January 20th, as one of the many first executive orders, I will sign all necessary documents to charge Mexico and Canada a 25% tariff on all products coming into the U.S. Now, he says it's kind of to curb the fentanyl crisis, reduce illegal immigration, but you got to wonder, A, if he's going to do it, and B, the impact it could have on the economy if this does go down. Mm -hmm. Right. If, if the tariffs were actually imposed, um, it'd be pretty brutal. Uh, the fact is that we source a little less than half of all of our fresh produce from abroad, especially in the winter. Um, our manufacturing supply chains here in North America are really integrated. So automotive products, for example, can cross the border four or five times before they're put in a final auto. So taxing American manufacturers, uh, raising grocery prices, none of that would be good for the U.S. economy, especially um, if you had knock-on effects for markets. Now, fortunately, we have lots of experience with uh, Donald Trump's first time around. And he used to tweet these tariff threats all the time, and they typically ended without tariffs. Uh, governments and companies would scramble to do something that would give Trump a win, and then he'd declare victory and move on. So that, along with the fact that Trump's not in office for a couple months, there are legal mechanisms you'd need to follow. I think we can hold off on worrying about our avocado prices in January. Well, I mean, they were saying that some of these tariffs could raise uh, how much more families could pay by over $100. I can't think of the exact term, but it was a big amount. And then Yeah, for sure. We, we have to remember, you know, Americans pay tariffs, not foreign governments or foreign companies, right. and particularly for things like produce that you can't get anywhere else in the winter. Uh, you, you know, you're not growing it in upstate New York or whatever. So, you know, uh, we, we, but, but we, should, we should hold off on freaking out at this point. Okay, how about, um, let's talk about this newly de developed Department of Doge, the de sure. Department of Government Efficiency that's led by Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. Now, um, some people are looking at this to kind of cut some of those programs that some people say should be eliminated in the first place, but then when you start to drill down on some of these programs, that's where you're getting some concerns, whether it's including veterans health care services, housing assistance, the Justice Department. What do you make of this? What do you think we're going to see? Will they be able really to get in there? and hammer away some of these these, these Yeah, problems. I mean, there's good news, bad news here. The good news is there's a ton that the government actually could cut mm -hmm. that would eliminate waste, would help private business, and generally make our lives better. And we're not talking about, you know, veterans' benefits, but instead, uh, you know, certain regulations that have just been on the books for years and really gum up things and make things uh, more expensive um, and, you know, we could find hundreds of billions of dollars like this. And it's great that the Trump administration wants to focus on this type of stuff. The bad news, of course, is that we don't really know how much this department can really do, um, how what the legal implications are. Um, and the real risk here is that it says a lot. We all get our hopes up and then it does very little. Well, one thing that is uh, maybe a little bit hopeful for folks right now is they're playing a little bit less for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, on a yeah. positive note, we're going to end here. Uh, with American Farm Bureau uh, saying that Thanksgiving dinner will cost $58 and a little bit over $58 this month, which is less, 5% less than 20, 2023 and 9% less than in 2022, but still up from what many folks paid in 2021. I mean, this is one sign. I mean, but when you look overall at the overall picture, we do have inflation coming down to begin with as we're moving into the next Trump administration. Yeah, this is great news. And we're seeing this across the grocery prices. Grocery prices aren't back to 2019 levels, but they are right. coming down, particularly as Americans are earning more. So, you know, as the long-term trend for American food prices is that they've been going down. So we devote a lot less of our paychecks today to groceries than we did, say, 20 or 30 years ago. Um, because, again, our paychecks have outpaced food inflation. Um, now, that changed during the pandemic. We had supply chain issues. We had uh, fiscal stimulus and the rest. 
But generally, we should expect that trend to continue if, of course, we don't get more tariffs on uh, right. Mexican and Canadian produce. You know what's interesting here? Like, obviously, prices are up in some cases like 20% when it comes to some of these, whether it's food or whatever it may be. And people always want the prices, wonder if the prices will ever go back down. I mean, they've been stacked on top of each other when it comes to inflation. Will they ever start to decrease back to levels maybe before the pandemic or even early pandemic? Yeah, I mean, we should expect certain things to go back down. I just saw turkeys on sale at my grocery right. store for 29 cents a pound. So, you know, some things we should expect to revert back to what we remember. Okay. But in a lot of cases, uh, there is going to be a new normal because if the entire economy suffered from deflation, meaning all prices went back down to those levels, well, that has a lot of bad economic mm. effects too. And so we shouldn't really be rooting for that. We should just hope that we have slow, steady improvement in our take home pay and that prices moderate so that eventually uh, it feels like things are cheap again. And we all want to make more. Thank you so For much, sure. Scott, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving.